Hello everyone. This is Amber Two Thousand here. Welcome to my channel. Well, I play a variety of games and do new relations for fanfics. I'm really hoping you, you enjoy my content. If you do, make sure to comment below. Leave a like and subscribe with the notifications on. Right, until next time, this is Amelie2000. Welcome to my channel. So, hi. The only link left. Chapter 16. Skin. Thor Isaac could sense the end moving in like a thunderstorm on the horizon. The one who he had to restore and complete his secret lover's work was through the man's daughter, Esther. She had been trained since born to take Simon's brave and fulfill her purpose. Yet, after one recent confirmation, her fate was taken to the core, so much so that she had to Given it all up completely, he could hear it in her voice. Everything he and, her, and the girl's father had worked their entire lives to accomplish was now nothing more than a fading idea that would never come to fruition. He wanted this calm to the gathering anger in his mind, but the old man knew wasting the last of his energy with negative thoughts wouldn't be productive. He no longer had the drive to keep pushing f towards his goals. Without more, without motivation, without purpose in his life, he didn't have the strength to live anymore. Esther sacrificed her family's legacy for something the high-weighting official did not quite understand. Yet, Simon's final instructions to him were clear in, in this matter. If something happens to Esther, and I'm not a whelm, the man spoke from Father Isaac's memory. <coughs> Sorry about that. Standing face to face with past versions of one another in the church and entry chamber. If she is harmed, or if she turns her back on, on our faith, I need you to do me a favor. If you are determined all is lost, take the machine to a dress I will provide and dispose of it. No matter what happens, we cannot allow it to fall into the hands of the government or others that will use it for evil. We are tasked with utilizing its energies in order to prevent death from falling upon this world. Others would use it for nefarious purposes. If we fail our plans, humanity still has a chance. Strand as it may be, I will place an envelope in the front cover of the ancient test that sits on your, your nightstand. Protect it and only open it open if all else is lost. Burn, burn it if we succeed. I think Senpai nodded. The me memory suddenly washed away from Veal. Like whiting in wet sand, being erased by the tickle of a tiny wave. Having hung up with Elsa, ending the conversation several hours prior, Isaac decided now was the time. They had failed. It was the only clarity in the man's mind. It took a few minute, moments to come to peace with his thoughts and decision. It only made sense that he would use the last of his life energy. Fulfilling Simon's final request. He sat in the corner of his oversized bed, struggling to get a clear breath through his mouth and nose and into his lungs. The man wheezed and coughed as he daped small drops of Kivsman, Kivsman from the corners of his lips with a finely woven handkerchief. He shared a trembling feeling along the envelope's folded flap until the order's wrath 
still was broken. Isaac unfolded the page and read the handwriting of his deceased best friend. We sent a couple of tears down his face through the many cracks and, and wrinkles below his eyes. When he finished reading the address and refolded the page, the elder slowly stood and made his way to the co coke track beside the entryway. He wrapped his eyes with his sleeve and then placed a dusty order on his head and turned to the full-length mirror. Cussing a grist of himself in the progress. Forcing a small food cooked cheese, the man stoked his long beard a couple of times. Tackling the truss that brought widely strips of silver together in the center. He looked at the fable shell of a man that sailed back at him. Yet he barely recognized the real as he saw. Father Isaac coughed and then skied, finally leaving the wheel. He ordered a much younger man, who was working the night shift at the church, low in weights, to help him move the machine from the basement to his car in the alley. But in the middle of the night, nobody was around but the two of them, and they performed their tasks for ease. They placed the machine on a rolling cart, navigated it, through the church and loaded it into the vehicle beside the loading dock. The elder told the man not to speak of what they did until he returned, knowing he didn't pan on coming back. After he was situated in the driver's seat and buckled in, Isaac cranked the car and sifted it into drive. As he pulled away from the church, he watched it shrink in his rear view mirror. It was the last time he would lay eyes on the space and he wanted to see it one more time. When it was completely out of sight, the man turned up the light and began making his way towards the dress his mentor provided, the dress he believed would be his final destination in this world. Oof. It basically says, Father Isaac is uh, going to die at the weather location his mentor his friend, as his father, said to take the machine. No way, is that basically killing himself? But no, not really, because he's old. So it means, it means he's taking the scene and he, him, the machine can die together wherever the, the location is. Basically. Sad. Sad, but. I mean, he's far, far I should go see his friend again. Basically. The pilgrim's stress of burned hail, charred fresh, and vomit still film through the small face. And morbid as it seemed, death liked in the, the sa scent to a memory of when her mom once burned a pork roast in the cock pot one summer. She gagged once and then swallowed hard hoping the weak lesson would vanish from her thoughts. She began breathing in and out of her mouth to avoid the smell. Then Lily's pull was doing the same. Despite the horrifying situation, the Red Street Bond felt thankful that she and Paul were still alive. Even if terrified, huddled in the corner of what used to be Rachel's realm, and cohesive, a struck idea bounced around her in her mind as she tried to calm her nerves and somehow make sense of what happened. When what seemed wet like grandness, Dustin's fart settled on a memory of a couple of years ago, years earlier. She had just graduated high school and knew she was going to take at least one gap year you know, before starting college. Is he even attended a college at all? Her mind was set on portraying music as a career. And she wrote several songs that both of her moms said they loved. One day, Des was finally finished writing a song that she had been working on for weeks. She strummed her guitar and sung it by herself in her room before presenting it to her parents. When she finally sailed it and had films performing, Mass was wiping tears from her eyes while Corey was just Corey just sat there with her mouth gape open. 
All she could say was, Holy shit. They were both essentially speechless. It was the one song she knew she would be, knew would be a huge hit if she recorded it. This shrouded with both pride and confidence as he imagines performing her art for a large audience. <clears throat> In her mind, she knew this was her best opportunity, so she planned to reach out to a producer she met through Victoria to work on laying the tracks down. Upon returning to her room after performing for her mother's, her powers grist and she was stuck in another reality where she met the mastermind version of her older mother. Older mom. She was terrified and thought she would never get home. It was the beginning of the multiverse merger. And it was the end of her musical career. She hadn't picked up a guitar since. For some reason, the lyrics from her song had moved to the forefront of her mind. She summed them silently to herself as she sat beside the love of her life. Skin. Verse 1. Skin a dense, unwaving skin, a power deep down, down deep inside. Not sable or to play pretend, tuck my soul away to hide. Plain time a dense, my troubles, far gone is yesterday's. Memories float up like bubbles. Maybe it will make us say they love the crowd shouts as they walk on from afar. In this story, I have no doubt you are the one true star. <clears throat> a Jewish recipe of give and take, a meal dance alone. Everything is now at stake. A storm is coming, a cry cone. Course, the smiles we make, the force, the paths we take, our walls. A comet sky, streaking without this care, your eyes they twinkle without compare. This favor is not for only my tongue. You are the reason I always sum. The sail ourselves where another. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. Truth so wise, facts discovered. Working together, life's taking shape. Falling apart. Hold together with tape. Wherever you are, I'm waiting for you. Wherever I am, you are there too. Verse 2. Skin at this we crusted skin. A power down deep inside. Now settled or praying pretend. Open up my soul to ride. In this moment, the idea of you, more than a face to see. My soul is open and plain to view, set from the saddles towards me. You are standing thus over there, I know you are kind of gray. I can all send between us, we will bail. Can you come outside to pray? A portable re recipe for disaster, a midnight dance in your arms, everything we never master. We won't trigger your alarms. Chorus The smiles we make, they force the paths we take, our walls. The comet sky streaking without care. Your eyes, they twinkle without compare. This favor is not for only my tongue. You are the reason I always sum. 
to sell ourselves when another truth of wise facts dissevered. Working together, life's taking shape, falling apart, hold together with tape. Wherever you are, I'm waiting for you. Wherever I am, you are there too. <coughs> Boys, we're seeing that, we're seeing you. Lay me there beside you. A future quest from the past. Don't be crows, but don't be brass. <coughs> another time, another space. A father's words, a mother's face. I don't always like the skin I'm in. When it stops, it starts again. In my eyes, my future wife, hopefulness, a well on life. <clears throat> First three, skin the dense letter skin, a power drawn for all to see. So much for playing pretend, my soul for you to meet. Picking through the shattered grass, darkness is so cruel. Is love a thing that really lasts? Or is it freeing too? I'm so sealed of all of that, but hopeful it's full and true. Falling from the world is flat. I'm falling over myself for you. I used to sing to hide the court sadness, to bury. It beneath a facade, emerging from the dark and madness, your existence I can now applaud. Cause the smiles we make, they force. The paths we take, all our walls. A comet sky streaking without care. Your eyes, they twinkle without compare. This favor is not for only my tongue. You are the reason I always sum. The sail ourself with another. Truth of wise, facts they severed. Working together, life's taking shape. Falling apart, hold together with tape. Wherever you are, I'm waiting for you. Wherever I am, you are there too. Of course, time still so. One time. Or for a second time. I forgot. The smiles we make, they force. The paths we take, all our walls. A comet sky, speaking without care. Your eyes twinkle without compare. This favor is not for only my tongue. You are the reason I always shone. To sell ourself where another truth a wise, fast dissevered. Working together, life's taking shape. Falling apart, hold together with tape. Wherever you are, I'm waiting for you. Wherever I am, you are there too. Atro. Skin a thin skin. Skin a thin skin. Skin a good skin. Skin, skin, skin. <clears throat> As the words faded from her mind, death took away the horrifying shock thoughts returning to the present. It was so dark without the candle light to bite in the area. She couldn't even see Paul, who was still pressed against her, with her cheeks laying on Dessa's shoulder. Hey! The blonde whispered down towards Paul's cheek. Hi, Miss Dragonfly. Paul was bothered, sniffing from where she sat, moving her head up white and off of Dessa's shoulder. Her voice sounded a bit hoarse, like it from heaving over earlier. Yet he had softened. 
Is this what it's like to be with you? With just as Lee, life's chasing investors are crazy as shit. This was glad to hear Paul's voice. Not only because he said I cared about the girl, though well, that was the part of it, but mostly because Paul sounded hopeful again. So I was told how the future would work for them if the athlete was terrified to even be around her. Well, things can get pretty wild, I guess. Not all the time, but yeah, literally, for sure. So I never really thought about what her life was like compared to others her age, same age. The biker knew she had a lot of explaining to still do. And at least now she felt that Paul would be more open to behave, believing her. I can do wild, Paul reassured, and it was in to her words. Just couldn't see because of the darkness, but she could sense a smirk on the brunette's face. Wait, um, I met it, Paul. A renewed sense of urgency invalidated Dusty's resolve. We have to get out of here, like now. If Rachel's death didn't satisfy Mazurza, she might return. We don't, and we don't need to be here if she does. I think we just leave the realm the same way we came in. <clears throat> it gets a little tricky since we follow the court here. It won't be as easy going back. The current? Paul wondered. Yeah, I think of it like a river that only flows one way. If you try and go against it, it'd be like pedaling a kayak upstream. Oh, are you into kayaking too? It'd take you for most of an outdoorsy kind of girl. I mean, you could really enjoy riding your bike. This is fracking sassy as hell. But I never pissed you as someone who camped or kayaked. Hey now, I'm good at outdoorsy stuff. My mom used to take me camping all the time. Maybe when we get out of here and everything calms down, you can take me. Sounds like a blast. It was obvious Paul was trying to focus on the future. Using, using positive thoughts to dis distract herself from all the new, boring things she experienced in a short span of time. It's a date. Just confirm. She immediately castrated, her, castrated herself in her mind. I mean, maybe date is too strong a word. She shrugged in her bills, man. Poor giggled. What would an official date with Destiny Caulfield Price look like? Hmm. Maybe a nomadic countryside motorcycle ride? Or maybe you could take me camping? Either way, I'm looking forward to it, silly lady. This was glad it was so it was dark so Paul couldn't see the pink that must have been appearing on her warm cheeks. She still wasn't comfortable with the idea that someone, besides her parents, cared all about her. I cared a lot about her. Though, so, as much as he loved the fart of sharing romantic moments with the girl, they still weren't out of the words yet. Of Louise yet. They needed to focus on the current predicament. This... Dust stood to her feet and pulled her girlfriend up beside her. Body since the back wall, side by side. Putting her way along the wall with one hand and holding poles with her other. Thus made her way to the little table where the stainless candle we recited. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that. She nearly tripped it over when she bumped into it, but caught the table before it fell. The barn reached out and felt the soft candle wax where the wick began. Upon brushing the wick with a finger, a quick lightning light flash whipped through the chamber, causing Jess to stumble backwards. Paul caught her and helped her to a more controlled cyan. 
What the fuck? The tall gold fence. Suddenly the flame lit and light was restored to the realm. The flame is back! Poor stream. Does that mean Wasel is alive? I... Dust touched her palm to her forehead and turned to face Paul. I... As the room seemed historic and warped with e elongated, scary, putty like stressing, Dust slipped her way to Wasel's trail and flopped down. She couldn't stop everything from bending and spinning out of control. Dust! Are you okay? Paul called out, quickly moving to Dust's side, but her voice sounded dull in the background. The biker noticed color bleeding from her view, missing together with a gray sail landscape. The panic was beginning to well up inside. She couldn't react to her girlfriend's questions, as motor seals seemed to be failing. Dad! A soft tone pales through her head, an overwhelming brightness filling her perception. With the last drip of energy remaining in her body, this was her the only words she could muster. Poor. Damn, damn, damn! Death spoke to herself, disappointment, sounding her words. She had just returned to her realm, hoping her recent dealings with the new roster would be the, the answer to her problem. I figured if I destroy the one who caused this mess, it would be Fitz. <coughs> she slammed her bald fist against a border to her side causing a booming echo to bounce throughout the wall's chamber, Emily returning to mostly silence. But nothing's changed. You're all still here. Back to the going board, I guess. She sighed, pacing back and forth on the ledge a couple of stories higher than the ground where the wandering souls were waiting to move on. <coughs> The woman looked down deep in thought. From a vantage point, she could see the gaps being filled in as more souls continued to join after their bodies died in the realm of living. Sharing the area, she shunted as she searched the newest arrivals, seeking the one she just destroyed. Rachel was nowhere in sight, and she knew that that wasn't something to concern herself with. As the previous roster she replaced, then it make it their eater. <coughs> Again, I'm okay. Sorry about that. There had never been an issue quite like this before, and every second the situation grew worse. She stopped wondering just how it happened years prior. Pushing most of her efforts on finding a solution. At least she should check that post off her list and seek a new answer. Suddenly, an idea sparked in her mind. Maybe the source of the problem wasn't the roster at all. Maybe it was the one who started this whole thing. Yes. She chuckled. That's it! Marzusa recalled as many disasters as she could. Each one sent hundreds of souls to her realm. It wasn't until after they a storm destroyed a bayside town in North America, immediately sending several hundred souls to her, that things began to unrival. Those souls were sent down below somewhere aimlessly wandering around. The power that originally existed as a balance between good and evil had made its way to a high school student in that bayside town. That girl somehow joined two potential timelines together because of the strength of her, her love for another. It was her that truly caused things to go away. Looks like I need to pay Destiny's mom a visit. Mom's just chuckled again. She knew Jessica was beginning to take hold 
on her thoughts. And she was prepared to do what was necessary to ensure souls could move on, even if she had to leave a trail of death in her wake. Nothing was going to deny her from restoring the transition process. Mass call failed. She whispered aloud, murmuring the name after mentally sifting through all the that had once held the, the one power. I think I, I need. I think we need to meet. Not wasting any time, my sister parted her course and was swiftly on her way back to the realm of the living. Ooh, bad time is coming. Uh oh. Hi, how are you, everyone? This is Emma 2000 again. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Because, you know, I, I really did enjoy making it. But. So I hope you enjoyed it. Comment, like, and subscribe with the notifications on down below. Till next time, bye!